Hey guys, welcome back to another Chief Pep video. Today, we're gonna refurbish the carburetor. So welcome back. So this week I was started to work on the carburetor, as I mentioned in my previous video. Um, there are two types of carburetors on the XV750, and I'm used to work on uh, one specific type, so I wanted to work on this type. Um, unfortunately, because I couldn't interchange certain parts. Uh, luckily, that worked out okay, since I found all the parts of the carburetor which I want to work on. Um, Unfortunately, I had some troubles with my uh, camera. Uh, one time I forgot to press record, really stupid of me. And the other one, I didn't notice that my battery was down. Um, I have two batteries, I have to switch them all the time. Uh, but I forgot uh, one. So um, this is the video that I can make uh, out of the footage that I have. Um, eventually it worked out pretty okay. These are the three carburetors I have. The right two you see are Mikuni type carburetors and the left one, the one I decided to work with, is the Hitachi type. At first I thought the float chambers, which I was missing, would be interchangeable, which they aren't. I didn't really check first. I never saw these green vacuum pistons before. It looks kind of funny. All these carburetors really look horrible. Everything was stuck, rusted and the aluminum looked completely dull. One of them was in neither case an option because this one was painted black. I really saw it as a challenge to restore one of them as good as I could. When I started the job, I seriously kept in account though, this restoration wouldn't work. If this was the case, I would go for the single carb configuration. The carburetors are joined together with some brackets. As you can see, I have a hard time with loosening the Phillips bolts. To open this screw, I have to use my locking pliers. I constantly switch my screwdrivers for the best fitting one so I don't damage the screws. In some cases you can hardly enter the screws so if you would damage the head you would never get them out. Of course I have a complete new stainless steel set handy for the restoration but first let's have a look if I can even fix all this. The insides looked horrible. Someone chose to use some kind of glue instead of gasket. And all the holes were filled with dirt and filth. At this point I decided, I can do this. I am going to make these carburetors as good as new. It's good to always first try to see which original parts you can use before replacing them with something else. Now that I took off all the parts of the Hitachi carburetor, it was time to take the parts I needed, like the float chambers and floats, off the other carburetors. Which weren't interchangeable. And the black one also was a Mikuni. Now what? And I couldn't continue with these, because these were even in a worse state. Then I all of a sudden found the complete button parts of the Hitachi carburetor, in a pretty strange way stuck together. But on the end, okay preserved state. I am still wondering if it was me who invented this type of storage. And voila, there are all the parts including all the jets. I took off the old baked gasket with my trusty old gasket scraper.
I cleaned the old glue kind of gasket with sticker solvent. Then I started to prepare my ultrasonic cleaner. It takes about an hour to heat it up. An ultrasonic cleaner cleans with 2% tickle per R33 cleaning fluid and the rest is water at around 50 or 55 degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Fahrenheit and an intense fast vibration. It vibrates all the dirt off materials like carburetors and penetrates all the holes which you otherwise couldn't clean so precise. In the meantime, I took the carburetors for an extra cleaning with, as we call this, cold degreaser together with an old toothbrush. The carburetor started to shape up after every treatment. I rinsed them with water and used the air compressor intensely to dry them and especially to open up and clean every hole. Then it was time for the ultrasonic treatment. I used around 2 liters of water. With a syringe I fill the water with an exact amount of cleaning fluid. The treatment takes between 10 and 20 minutes. 15 is average. I have it 16 minutes because my carburetors are pretty bad shape. This sounds like nothing, but one minute too long could turn the color towards black and dull. This looks like a fries basket, which it is kind of. First let's do the big parts. If I would buy this machine again, I would buy one size bigger, but it's just right for the job. If you turn the lid upside down that is, the thing makes a horrible noise. This is part of the process. See how the carp shakes? It's important to rinse it again and dry it really well otherwise the material will corrode. Already looks much better. The water already was getting dirty, but okay enough to do the other one. I would polish them as well of course. Now the small parts. I've cut a sieve for the small parts, like my jets, so they don't fall through. Again, kitchen stuff. I ordered a revision set, which contains new gaskets, a new needle valve set, and seal, and new needle. I started to polish everything best as I could. I used StarClean polish for this also found very often in kitchens. Somebody wrote down XV750 with a white marker on this cap. Thanks. I used the Dremel tool for polishing, but also with a steel brush to remove all the rust. It's important you clean and polish the vacuum chamber very well. The vacuum piston has to run smooth and free.
As you can see, I use the polish for everything. It's a magic paste. The pilot screw is very important. The best starting position is two and a half turns out. So, you screw the pilot screw all the way in to its end and turn it out two and a half turns. Then, your engine will always start. This is something the manual doesn't tell you. The jet with the biggest hole is the main jet. This one goes in the center. The other one with the smaller hole is the pilot jet. Always check if your floater and needle works properly. I use new bolts everywhere. I use a little bit of engine oil on moving parts like the choke plunger, but also the vacuum piston. I finally check all moving parts and check if everything works well. So as you can see, uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, I've got the carburetor here actually. Um, what I think was really important, I just, uh, I see it as a kind of uh, a challenge to just work with the products or the, the, the materials that I have. Uh, of course, it's really easy to buy a, ma a single carbureted version. Uh, I've thought of this actually, but um, I also noticed on all the forums that I read, not everybody is as happy with the, uh, with the single carburetor. It really looks great, I have to be honest about that, but still the duo carbs on the XV750 are the best. Um, in my scrambler, I did a uh, Dynojet um, modification, stage two. Um, I still could do that, but um, I thought let's try it with the standard um, uh, with the standard configuration and let's have a look at how that works. So uh, I just leave it standard as this, and um, I um, I now adjusted it for as just to start it, uh, uh, so I can start the bike, and then I will bring the bike uh, on a trailer to uh, this specific. Uh, uh, workshop where they have the dyno jet and they will uh, really 
uh, um, make the carburetors uh, in sync and the, 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 the cylinders in sync. So I'm going to do that later when the bike is completely finished. Uh, for now, it's perfect like this. So I hope I can visit the, web, uh, the, the workshop next week because they're working on the tank at this moment. And of course the subframe will follow. Um, I just want to have a feeling how everything is going there. I tried to make an appointment, but um, Albert Rezelman is really busy. So it, it's hard uh, to, to drop by and to work together uh, next week. We have to, uh, uh, to sync our uh, agendas for that. Maybe I'll visit them next Saturday. That that would mean that my video will be later updated but I'll update you on Facebook so thank you for watching for this video uh, and uh, I will see you next week obviously subscribe here if you haven't done that yet here are all my other videos uh, you can look at them of course as well and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye